Hello and welcome. So this video is about how I use uh, scriptable objects and nested scriptable objects. So this is um, my project that is pretty much work in progress at the moment. So you will see a ridiculous amount of bugs because we are trying to see uh, how far can we actually take scriptable objects and you know what should you use them for, what shouldn't you use them for. So uh, I will just show you here, like we have the, the demos type that like I was telling before. He was asking why don't you just have a list? That's because I can um, win the unscriptable objects. So let's just say I want fire and I want water. So I can go down here and I'm using the auto inspector so it's a little nicer. So I can go like I want a fire icon. I want it to be named fire damage. Uh, you know, and on and on, but you can already say here, well, I could just have uh, it be serializable. Then I would kind of get the same thing as this here. Yes, that is true. But if I then want to go down to defend and say I want a magic resist time, I click and then go down here and I say I want it to resist against fire and water now you could e you could probably easily do the through code but uh, the main of main thing i wanted to was to do it so uh, a person who do not know code or you don't have to reopen into the code to add those things here you can all do this through unity you don't need code experience to add these specific things right here. So now we have actually have a magic stat in our game that defends against fire and water. And we now have fire and water damage. You could easily uh, you could easily make a list or a enum, in or an enum for those types here. But it becomes a little more complicated when you have like a magic that has to have more in it. it, it it's it's easy to make through code. I'm not saying it isn't. I'm just saying that if you want a designer that does no coding and have him go into it, it becomes a lot easier this way. And also the other beautiful thing about this, so let's say I wanted to add that to my to my player base stats now. I wanted to him to have magic defense from the beginning. So I'm just gonna go in at magic and go one. So now I've just added magic defense to my game without really without doing any code. So you know that is that's that is one of the benefits. So I also went a little further with uh, items. So let's just go into let's make a new sword. So we're going to go in and go we now have this new item here. So first we're going to pick an item type. And you can see uh, we have a bunch of item types here. So we want to pick the, the sword. So you can also see that there are small icons at them. And that is the, the type that they are. And you can also see I have them up here. So we have melee weapon types and armor types. It, it, what that means is pretty much that armor types have a specific slot that they can only be equipped on. They, can, they will only be seen as armors where melee weapons will only be seen as melee, and ranged weapons will only be seen as ranged weapons. Then we have uh, quest items, let's say that you have a, a material, um, you know, like wood and stone you want to use for crafting, and then you have like uh, black wood or sandstone that you want for quest items, meaning that simply by adding this quest thing here, onto the item, so we can go down, down to our item. Let's just say we, we want it to be like a, a main quest item. I don't know why I've, I have two, but I have. This way it will now be put into the quest inventory because it already knows this is the type of a quest item. But uh, we don't want that, we want it to be a sword. So we're gonna go back to sword. Uh, I'm also using the old inspector, I don't know if I already told that. So I can like uh, add the weapon here but I'm not going to do that right now. Then we also have object pooling. I will show that a little later. That's also a scriptable object. Yes, I'm using a lot of scriptable objects. So let's say the weapon, well, we want that weapon to use fire damage. So it does fire damage. We also want it to be using 
water damage. And we also want it to be to have some magic. We also want it to give some uh, some mana, so we can just go mana. And you know, see how easy this is for a non-coder to go in and create this item. But let's say and he goes, oh, I want air damage now. I want the game to have air damage. All he has to go to do is just go down here and go air, and create new. And all he has then to go to do like is going at the air icon, go like air damage, and then um, I haven't set it up completely yet, but then those stats here will be automatically added into the stat screen. So they will have the icon shown here, and they will have the name, and when you hold the mouse over it, you will have the description shown here. Meaning the designer can just go in and quickly add this. And we can just go, well, we also want air la magic to be part of uh, the magic defense. We simply just go back to our item. And say, well, this is also now doing air damage. And air. So there, there you have it. The, so this pretty much is um, the way to do it, in my opinion. Um, it's a lot easier when you first have set it up to add and remove stuff. So let's say I, I don't want the air one anymore. I can't. I cannot uh, just go down and press delete because it is nested. That is one of the beautiful thing about nested. So I have made a delete system that goes in and removes it from our game. So now it has been removed. Of course, I need to make it a little better because it doesn't remove it from magic down here. It's still a null, null reference. So that's again something you might want to look into. Um, then we have the, let's see, what do we have there? We have the javelin, which is a throwing object at, at using object pool. But uh, I don't think the javelin is working right now. So let's just move the player. Where do we have player, 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 player. We go, let's just move him over here quickly. And then we're gonna take this box. Oh, let's just click play. Come on, game. So we're just gonna click on this box here. And move it down here for, uh, before the player. And you're close to see this is also using scriptable objects here. It has a loot table that we can click on here. So we can check in the loot table what is typical, what, and I called it um, uh, prop wooden box. That means all the wooden boxes in the game will now have a ch will have 10% chance to drop two coins they give one gold each. All all the boxes in the game have that chance, but we can also go into the box again and say the lo uh, the, the loot chest table. I probably need to rename that. That is its own drop table. So we can say it had now have a hundred percent chance to drop the potion. Um, let's see one more. Um, bu -bu -bu. Well, we can actually have it drop our new item, but I don't think. Let's have it drop the the, the spear, and let's add it some coins in. So let's say it has a 50% chance to drop around 26 coins, and they give one to two coins each. Uh, let's just put it a little down, else it's because right now I don't think coins are working. So when I destroy this. That did not work. <laughs> Only two things dropped. It's always nice when you're trying to make something. Oh, all right, I see. That's because the the javelin doesn't have the the right function on it. But then, um, God damn it! Uh, where do we have? Have it? Can I just pop it in again? Let's remove the javelin. There we go. There you can see. Coins everywhere. So. We can just destroy those here. Uh, just to show you with the scriptable objects. So. The potion here. 
if I can click on them right. You can see they have a reference to the scriptable objects that they're holding, which are this object pool up here. So you can see them. So you see the potions are right here. Meaning when I go back into the game and pick them up, they return to be uh, not active because they're returning to the object pool. So let me give you another example of that. As we have our range enemy. Uh, just need to get rid of those or they're gonna be annoying. Can I actually lose health right now? Yeah, I thought so. That's the beautiful thing when you're going to change some core stuff, nothing works. Right now there's a bug where they're aiming uh, over your head when you're crouching. But as you can see here, we have the range enemy. If I can target him through all this debug tool stuff. So we have a range enemy here. And he is riffing all the stats, that's not the one we want. Enemy, range enemy, ragdoll. Ah, uh, so much stuff. Do we have. Alright, so here is the weapon. And you can see the weapon is referenced the uh, arrow object pooling. So let's find the object pooling. So much stuff to go through. Uh, well, we have arrows All right here. So you can see the arrows are spawning and then uh, they go right back into the object pooling because they're hitting the ground. So you can see here, click, and it goes back in. So all it needs to, um, to actually get those arrows here is just this object pooling and they instantly have a reference. That's also a nice thing about uh, scriptable objects. But uh, I think you get my point of what I was trying to do. That if you only want to do code, and you and it, it's it's a solo project, I would say yeah, it's it's probably better. Um, I don't know if it's better actually, but yeah, I would probably just stick to doing the normal things maybe. But if you have a designer. This way, he can uh, he can just add whatever he he feels like to try it out, and just delete it afterwards if he doesn't like it. Of course, um, the more specific stats down here, like health uh, and movement speed and stuff like that, needs to, of course to be coded into the system. But um, for damage type and resistance type, you know, uh, the system has just been put up to it. And you can just take whatever you throw into it. So, so that's that's pretty much it. Yep. <laughs> I, I hope this gave you a idea if you wanted to try and uh, go down the scriptable object path. Um, and the reason why I'm using nested is just that I, I cannot delete. I cannot delete them if uh, they're nested. I need to do my specific way of deleting. So I make sure that they will be deleted the way that I want them to be deleted. And, you know, it also feels a lot less when, you know, it's a, it is a little cleaner, I guess. And also this way I can just have the one called um, all stats type container. This one here I pretty much referenced everywhere. So this contains all the different types of stats because it just referenced those here. So whenever I make one here, you know, it is automatically reference in here. Yep. I hope that gave you a better idea of um, if you want to try and use the stat system here with scriptable objects if I have. So, you know, thank you for watching.